Welcome to day three of the 2021 Esri Developer Summit. It's been a great summit so far, but we've got a lot more for you today. We're going to talk about extending and automating your enterprise. Uh, we're going to go through our desktop SDKs. We're going to talk about extending ArcGIS Enterprise and the Enterprise SDK. You know, ArcGIS for developers is more than just building new apps. We've seen a lot of capabilities of building new apps and tools for you to use over the last two days. But it's also about extending the ArcGIS system and the software that you use every day. Whether it's the tried and true APIs that we've been shipping for many years in ArcGIS, or the brand new APIs or SDKs that we've introduced this um, week with you. We'll be demonstrating uh, automation of ArcGIS Enterprise using Python and using highly available systems and also containerizing services using Kubernetes. So let's get started with extending and automating your enterprise section of our plenary. So when you think about the SDKs that you use to extend ArcGIS in your enterprise, you're typically going to think about these three, which are the ArcGIS Enterprise SDK, the ArcGIS Pro SDK, and also the Arc Objects SDK. Let's talk a little bit about Arc Objects. These are the building blocks for ArcGIS Desktop and ArcGIS Enterprise. This is where you can customize ArcMap and extend it, but also it enables you to build ArcMap-based uh, SOEs and SOIs for ArcGIS Enterprise. We continue to support Arc Objects in Visual Studio version 2017 um, and 2019. And also, Arc Objects continues to be supported. Um, there's a little asterisk there, we're going to come back to that. So, for several years, we've been encouraging you to migrate away from desktop development using the Arc Objects SDK. And in 2020, um, we announced that we'll be maintaining ArcMap. Uh, out until March of 2026. That's five years away, and that's a pretty long time. All the details of this can be found in the ArcMap Continue Support page online, and also the development lifecycle information online as well. It's as important to you because we don't have plans for future releases of ArcMap past the 10.8.x series of releases, and we're at 10.8.1 right now. Your new development technology for desktop should be targeting ArcGIS Pro and the Pro SDK. If you are developing using ArcGIS Engine, you should really be targeting the ArcGIS Runtime SDKs and ArcGIS Runtime. Also, if you're using services published from ArcMap to ArcGIS Enterprise, you um, should be using the Enterprise SDK. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So when you think about the Enterprise SDK, this is extending ArcGIS Pro-based compatible services. So you can build your SOEs and your SOIs based upon those services for both .NET and Java. Again, if you've been using these services published from ArcMap and the ArcObjects SDK, you should strongly be considering migrating over to the Enterprise SDK for these services. Um, ArcGIS Enterprise will begin providing an optional install to continue to support ArcMap-based services at the end of 2021, this year. But by default, the ArcGIS Enterprise SDK will be the default SDK that we recommend you use to build these types of services. Again, please consider migrating over to the Enterprise SDK um, as soon as your enterprise will allow it. So, Let's talk about the ArcGIS Pro SDK for Microsoft.NET. There's really four patterns here that you can use within the Pro SDK. The first is add-ins. This allows you to develop new tools and functionality that extends the user interface of ArcGIS Pro. This is really the most common uh, pattern that you'd be using in an enterprise to extend Pro. Also, um, the next pattern is manage configurations. This provides all the capability of add-ins, but also uh, additional customization. That picture that you're looking at on the, on the upper right part of the screen, that is a set of tiled web maps, but it actually is ArcGIS Pro. Um, you can customize Pro UI that much using managed configurations. Clicking on any one of those web maps starts up ArcGIS Pro, so a lot of power there for you as developers. The next pattern is plug-in data sources which provides uh, custom data 
um, to be used and integrated with ArcGIS Pro, just like standard feature layers or uh, as tables. And the last pattern is core host applications, which allows developers to develop standalone applications for 64-bit uh, geoprocessing or geometry access. So you can essentially run ArcGIS Pro headless and you can schedule all that power for you executing on your desktop. Also, um, there was a lot of work to the ArcGIS Pro SDK done in 2020. We introduced several new APIs for device location, for graphics layer, topology, voxel layers, but also an enormous amount of work went into the existing APIs for layouts and reports and editing and geodatabase. Uh, a lot of great work there for you to check out this week in tech sessions. But rather than me continue to talk about it, I'd like to introduce Charlie McLeod to walk us through um, the ArcGIS Pro SDK and its new capabilities. Charlie? Thanks, Jim. So for the Pro SDK, uh, I'm going to be showing a demo for three uh, new APIs introduced at 2.7, uh, device location, the voxel layer, and parcel APIs. We'll look at device location first. OK, so the device location API um, allows you to interact with GPS and GNSS devices connected to Pro. And I've just connected to a GNSS device providing location data uh, from downtown Portland. Using the device location API, um, I've set the view mode to keep within view. And then track up navigation has been set to true. Those settings are allowing the view uh, to continue to change its position uh, to follow um, the, the location. Uh, I can also capture uh, the changing uh, location from the GNSS device with the API. In this particular case, I'm streaming that location information uh, along with the accuracy to my dock pane. And then I'm adding those previous locations uh, to my view uh, in a graphics layer. OK, let's take a look at that in the code. So to capture those changing locations, I subscribe to something called the snapshot changed event. And that changing location of snapshot is passed into uh, my event handler. Uh, I extract its location. And then I um, provide the location to my dock pane along with the current accuracy reading. And then I'm adding um, that previous location as a graphic uh, to my view along with a custom marker. Um, but um, I could just as easily have added that previous location uh, to a feature class uh, or to the graphic view overlay directly. OK, so let's look at our second API then, the voxel layer API. So uh, voxel layers were introduced into Pro uh, at 2.6 uh, and then to the SDK uh, at 2.7. Uh, you can create uh, voxel layers on any volumetric data stored in uh, NetCDF. And for this particular demo, we're looking at uh, voxel data for um, salinity concentrations in the North Atlantic. Uh, I'd like to cover two aspects of the device uh, of the voxel layer API, something called slices uh, and sections. We'll look at slices first. OK, so a slice is used uh, to, uh, for viewing uh, just a specific area of the voxel. Um, with the UI, I can define a slice um, or a section uh, interactively. Uh, but with the SDK, um, I can define, uh, I can define uh, multiple slices or sections for that matter, um, automatically. Uh, and I'm going to do that with my custom create slice function. So I've created two slices, a slice one uh, and a slice two. Notice how the slices slice the voxel volume visually. Uh, and then they also expose um, the interior structures as well. OK, sections. So a uh, section is used to display a two-sided horizontal or vertical plane. With the API, I have created a custom convert to section menu item that I've added to um, the slice context menu. Uh, and I'm going to use that to create a section using the same uh, cutting plane as I used to define the slice. So notice with the section, we only show 
the two-dimensional vertical plane. Okay, so I'm going to reset the demo. I'll go to Visual Studio. Uh, I'm going to enable my breakpoints. And then we'll go back to Pro, and this time we'll look at the code. Okay, so creating slices first. To create a slice, we use something called a slice definition object. Uh, I provide a name, a location in the voxel. In this case, I'm specifying the origin, but it could be anywhere in the layer. Uh, and then I provide an orientation and tilt to define the cutting plane. Uh, I'm defining a second slice. Uh, it's the same as the first, except I'm changing the orientation uh, by 15 degrees. And then I call create slice on the voxel layer with my slice definitions to once again create my two slices. Okay, my custom context menu item, creating a section. So creating a section uses the same uh, general parameters as we use to create a slice. So it's pretty straightforward with the Pro SDK uh, to take the parameters from the slice, the name, the position, the orientation and tilt, apply them to the section, this time I call create section. And then in this particular instance, I am deleting the slice. And there is my section. Okay, let's look at our final API then, the parcel API. So we're looking at a parcel fabric off the southern coast of Kauai uh, that I've created with the parcel API. Um, I already have a plat selected, shown by the zone, sector, and plat combination here. And for this demo, uh, on my custom doc pane, uh, I've implemented um, a two-step workflow to illustrate how you can automate uh, some of your parcel workflows with the parcel API. Uh, the first step, we are going to create lots. Uh, we're going to create lots using this selected line work. I show here in red for my plat. Um, you can think of lots as being um, the way we subdivide the land. Uh, and you can think of plats uh, as having been uh, the line work having been imported from the original survey drawings. So I'm going to run my custom import plat function. We launch into the code, and I am calling a special edit operation called copy line features to parcel type that comes with the parcel API. As input, I provide uh, my source lot lines, uh, uh, excuse me, my source plat lines, and then uh, the target lot line and lot polygon feature layers, along with a parcel type of lots. So when the edit operation runs, the plat line work, it's being imported. Uh, we are creating the lot line features, the lot polygon features, and then when the lot, lot polygon features are um, completed, uh, we symbolize them in um, light brown. Step two, create tax parcels. Uh, you can think of tax parcels um, as being the uh, taxable interest uh, or ownership of the land. And typically we create parcels when the lots have been sold. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, I'm just going to select some lots. Let's say these five or six lots here. We'll say that these are the lots have been sold, and then I'm going to use them uh, to create my parcels. So I'll run my custom create parcels function. We're going to run another special edit operation, copy parcel lines to parcel type, that also comes with the parcel API. As input, we provide our source lots, the target tax parcel lines, tax parcel polygon feature layers, and then some Boolean flags. And then I complete the process uh, running this uh, special function, build parcels by record, uh, build parcels by record. Uh, it updates the parcel fabric topology, and then the active record is used to update the parcel history. And there are my newly created parcels as shown here in green.